Today we have a special guest. We have Dr. Mike Rudolph, a senior scientist at New York Structural Biology Center, and he's going to discuss uh, his latest project on Lyme disease. Thank you, Mike, for joining. Thank you, Martina, as well. And yeah, please take it away. Yeah, thank you, Daniel, and thank you, Martina, and uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, as I uh, um, saying, the uh, I think this technology is terrific, and uh, it will have I think it will have quite an impact on the uh, future of structural biology. Lyme disease is a bacterially transmitted disease to humans through the bite of bacterial infected ticks. In the United States of America, the bacteria is Borrelia burgdorferi. Uh, Lyme disease is also a significant health threat in parts of Europe where the ideologic agent is Borrelia abzalii, and in Asia, it's also a significant health threat where the ideologic agent is Borrelia grinii. There are at least 25,000 new cases of Lyme reported to the CDC each year in the United States, and as I said, it's a pretty nasty disease uh, with chronic symptoms such as arthritis where you get joint swelling and stiffness, neurologic symptoms such as numbness, pain, and facial paralysis, and cardiac symptoms such as myocarditis, lightheadedness, and heart palpitations. And unfortunately, there are no current uh, vaccine or monoclonal antibody therapies available. There is an antibiotic regimen that is given, if it's given to the patient within a short period of time after the bite, it will clear the uh, bacteria from, from the body. But the problem with that is that the transmission of Borrelia from the tick occurs principally in the nymph nymph stage of the tick life cycle. And that is an important point because the nymph stage of the, uh, of the life cycle, the tick is very small. So it's much harder to find. And so you can't rely uh, uh, particularly on um, finding the tick because it's so small, you're less likely to find it. Um, and so you're much more likely to get uh, infected. And so um, obviously uh, post uh, bite uh, therapeutics would be a very effective or a more effective way to approach this disease. Animal studies have shown that disease transmission from ticked animals can be blocked by antibodies that bind to outer surface proteins of the Borrelia. Um, in particular, uh, two proteins we'll talk about today, today OSP-A and OSP-C. This, this work is a collaborative effort with uh, several different groups, uh, one of them being Mass Biologics, which does most of the antibody discovery, and Nick Mantis's group at the Wadsworth Center, which is at the New York State Department of Health and SUNY Albany, where they do most of the antibody characterization. Most of this work uh, has been funded by NIAID on a B-cell epitope mapping contract, where Nick Mantis is the uh, principal investigator on this contract, and we at the New York Structural Biology Center are uh, subcontractors. And so uh, the first uh, structure we're going to talk about today is um, OSP-A, bound to um, antigen binding fragment of a very powerful monoclonal antibody 221-7. Up here in yellow is the OSP-A. It is a uh, 21 uh, stranded anti-parallel uh, beta sheet. And down below here is the, ant the FAB, the anti antigen binding fragment of this powerful monoclonal antibody 221-7. In uh, light red here is the heavy chain, and in blue is the, the light chain. And so before we go any further, I will uh, draw the uh, CDRs of, of, the, of the FAB. To, uh, yeah. Can you can you bring the menu then next to oh, us? Sure. Like a tablet, sure. if you don't mind. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Awesome. And then I'll I'll bring up that and we'll, it will uh, this uh, this plugin uh, highlights the CDRs, which each one of these heavy chain and light chains has three of them. The CDRs are very important because those are the regions of the antibody that are altered in order to improve the potency of the antibody towards the antigen. Um, and this, this occurs during the affinity maturation process. And if you um, look here, we zoom in a little bit here, you can see the six CDRs colored uh, um, or highlighted by their color, where the CDR H3 is in purple, the CDR H2 is in orange, and the CDR H1 is in red. And on the light chain, the CDR uh, um, L3 is in green. The L2 is here in, in, in lighter green, and the L1 is in a very light blue. And 
this this is these CDRs are the region of the antibody that um, do most of the interacting with the antigen. And so what that does is it, it permits us to identify uh, the regions of the antigen, in this case OSPE, that are uh, binding to the to the antibody. Um, I should say really quickly that all six of the CDRs interact with OSPE with uh, uh, H3, uh, H1, and H2 being the principal binders uh, of of the of the antigen OSPE. And and so the looking at the interaction of the antibody, the CDRs with OSPE allows us to highlight regions in the OSPE that interact. And in this case, out of the 21 strands, it's strand four to strand nine that are interacting with the CDRs. And, and and of OSPE. And, and what we what we uh, get from that is we can uh, firstly identify uh, the immunogen and say, well, if the antibody is a potent antibody, which 221-7 is, as it protects mice and non-human primates against infection from uh, Borrelia burgdorferi. Um, it, it, also, it, it also highlights the region, which is in this case strands four to nine, that are eliciting this, this potent uh, monoclonal antibody response. And so we would identify this region of the immunogen as a potent immunogen, making it a good candidate for a potential vaccine. But it's also giving us the opportunity to look at the uh, conservation of residues in strands 4 to 9 from Borrelia burgdorferi to Afzelii to Grinii. And in this case in particular, uh, the residues in strands four through nine are highly conserved across these different three Borrelia genus species, which means that uh, this MAB should protect or have a, an effect against these other Borrelia. Where, and, and in fact, it turns out that, they, that it does. Um, uh, MAB 221-7 has Borrelial cytal activity against Burgdorferi, Gorinii, and S. Dalii. And so it, again, it's another... Um, reason why we really like this monoclonal antibody because it's, oh, yeah. it's potent That's it's great. potent it, it it binds it protects like i said mice and nhps really really well it has uh, cross reactivity against the the different uh, genus species and so because of that um, this monoclonal antibody is actually itself in clinical trials as we speak and so it's a it's a terrific candidate and like i said it's in clinical trials now and so it, it provides quite an opportunity, again, for monoclonal antibody therapeutics, as well as the uh, selection of a very potent immunogen in this concept of vaccine design. The other thing I wanted to mention really quickly is as you get these crystal structures of FABs bound to OSPE here, if the antibody is more potent um, um, than, or if, it, if it's a potent antibody, you can uh, start to think about potential mechanisms or function of the OSPE in vivo. And maybe this region has a really important uh, function in vivo and knocking it out or blocking it. Maybe it has an important protein-protein interaction and blocking that um, provides the potency of the antibody to protect against um, infection. So what's the actual target of uh, the antigen in you know, the human cells? <laughs> That's a great question. So that is not really well described. Uh, oh. So, what, so what it is known, um, only there's a bunch of interactions here. What is mm -hmm. known is that OSP A functions inside the tick midgut to interact with a receptor in the tick midgut, TROSP A, and, mm -hmm. and it maintains the Borrelia in the tick midgut until the uh, tick takes a blood meal, which means it's feeding. Mm -hmm. on, on the human, unfortunately. And when the blood when that blood mill is taken in, OSPE expression is reduced. And so that releases the Borrelia in the tick midgut or from the tick midgut, where it travels from the tick midgut to the salivary glands of the tick. There, um, the uh, as OSPE's expression is being reduced, OSPE's expression is being increased. And OSC is the next uh, antigen antibody complex we're going to talk about. And so once, it, so once the Borrelia gets into the uh, salivary glands of the tick, where it's about to go into the human, and this takes quite a while. The, the tick feeds are 24 to 48 hours, so this process is quite slow. When it gets into the salivary glands, OSC is cranked up, and there OSC has been shown to interact with um, SAL-P15, which is a 
kick salivary protein. And so, mm-hmm. and that's very interesting. This is very interesting because sal P15 has immunomodulatory uh, function, where it can, it's where it, it slows down or mitigates the human immune response. And that makes sense because when the tick is feeding, you know, it's like I said, it's feeding for quite some time. You do not want the human immune system to attack the tick. And so the tick is regulating the uh, human immune system. And so Borrelia is taking advantage of that and it's, and it's uh, the, or taking advantage of the tick system and using Sal P15 putatively to regulate the immune system and evade uh, human, human wow. immunity. Very right, convenient so yeah, for this, the bacteria, but just deleterious for us, unfortunately. Right? Correct. Yes, correct, correct. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good and bad. Um, and um, so... Yeah, I just wanted to show how we have in Magenta yeah. a bunch of uh, stacking interactions. Yeah. And yeah, then so the, also so, some intramolecular H bonds. Right. And as you right. mentioned before, Mike, we have some salt bridges here, right? Yes, there are there are five in salt red. bridges yeah. in the in the interface mm-hmm. between the CDRs and OSPE. That is correct. So it's again a tight. All of these uh, characteristics contribute to this one nanomolar or sub one nanomolar binding affinity of two uh, two one seven to OSPE. And so um, this is the uh, structure of um, two fabs bound to in here in yellow. These are the uh, antigen binding fragments from an antibody, a mouse antibody in this case. Um, these are the fabs of of beef of this antibody named B5, and here's one of the fabs, and here's a second fab, and each one of these fabs is interacting with a homodimeric OSP C, and this is OSP C type A, by the way. There are multiple variants of uh, OSP C in Borrelia burgdorferi, which presents a problem for vaccine design, and also for Mab uh, protection, monoclonal antibody protection. Um, and so what basically what you see here is these fabs interacting with the same exact interface with a twofold, right? So this, this is the interaction that we see in the crystal structure. And uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, OSC uh, is very polymorphic. And so this is OSC variant A or type A. And so we also solved the crystal structures of a few other types of OSC. And one of those being uh, OSC. Uh, OSP C type B, which is here in blue, and so and so what we're again what we're looking for is um, regions of the antigen that are uh, most effective at uh, eliciting a strong antibody response, and OSP C type A does that. B five is uh, protects mice against tick infection uh, of Lyme disease. Um, and um, and then on top of that, um, we're, we're, we're looking to see how much cross, cross reactivity we can get with B5 towards these other many types of OSC variants. And so what we'll do uh, here in the stacks is we will uh, let me select. You want to overlay these two guys? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to superposition this uh, OSC type B in blue onto OSC type A in the complex structure. Um, right now they're here overlaid. Okay, wow. very good. Looks pretty cool. Let's see the table. Yep. Yeah, the RMS is one point one, as we saw mm-hmm. the other day. One point one angstroms. Yeah, yep. that's an RMSC yep. score. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's good. It, the, oh. the sequence identity is right around eighty percent, and so this is what you'd expect oh, no. as far as RMS deviation or structural similarity. Um, and hmm. also in the epitope region, uh, the like specifically the. The sequence conservation is that high? The so there are yeah so there are some pretty uh, ver- higher variable regions. One of those regions is this loop. So it's so OSC uh, is a six helical structure, and again this it's a homodimer, and this loop region here is the loop between helix uh, five and six, and so uh, it's termed loop five six, and this loop is the most divergent region um, of the OSC variants in Borrelia burgdorferi. And so what I've drawn here is uh, two, we did, we did a, 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 an overall analysis of the uh, OSC B structure and what would it, where it clashes with B5 because uh, B5 does not bind to OSC C type B. And obviously, it binds binds quite tightly in the nanomolar range again to OSC type A, 
And so what you can see here is this residue here is glutamate 175 in us uh, C type of B. And it's sterically clashing. I drew it as a space fill to show oh. these steric clashes. Yeah. And it's sterically clashing with tryptophan 100 in B5's uh, CDRH3. Mm. And uh, and then um, there's another region up here, 162. And uh, uh, this is an alanine residue. Um, it's, it's a small, you know, one little methyl group. But in this region of, uh, of the loop 56, um, there's an insertion. There's a, an insertion of a residue, and that causes the loop to kick out a little bit and sterically clash with uh, tyrosine 47 um, in uh, the H2 of, of, of the B5 fab. And so there, and there are, there are more of these types of clashes in the structure. I won't go through all of them, obviously about a half a dozen of them that we believe contribute to the lower affinity of B5 mm -hmm. towards um, us C type B relative to A. And so again, what we're doing is we're, we're selecting, uh, you know, uh, the regions of the antigen that elicit powerful antibodies like B5 and 2217, and then also looking on the MAB side for cross-reactivity. And so I said there's a, there's a, the OSC is quite polymorphic in Borrelia burgdorferi. There are about 20 uh, types of OSC or variants of OSC in Borrelia burgdorferi. And from our uh, analysis here, we could do a sequence alignment of these other 18 OSC types, and we believe that B5 would only interact with three additional ones. So, so it's, oh, it wouldn't wow. be overly cross. It wouldn't be overly cross reactive. Yeah. But, uh, but but this is are those? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, are those like how frequent are these other variants? They're, they're, you know, because they're, yeah, they're, it, it might I, be the. The I don't know the exact. Uh, um, frequency of all of them, but they're 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 all prominent variants. I'll just say okay. that. Okay. Yeah. And so and so we you know this is just the way things are. And so uh, just recently we solved the uh, second crystal structure of a human antibody, um, B11, oh, and, and nice. these these this structure is not published, so we just solved it. It's not uh, published yet, so I'm not going to present it here. Um, but it's it's binding further down into the middle here. Uh, same kind of FAB2 interaction with the OSI homodimer in the center. Um, and it's a more conserved interaction. There's less, uh, var less uh, variation uh, where uh, within the epitope uh, that binds to this uh, human antibody, B11. Um, and so that may be more cross-reactive, but nevertheless, you know, we, we, like I said, we, we still have to do, do that structural analysis, yeah. deeper structural analysis. Oh. Um, so yeah, this is this is basically what we're doing. We've, we've it, this is a five year contract with NIAD, and we're just beginning the fourth year, and we've solved many many crystal structures of OSBE bound to many different uh, Fab fragments. We're comparing and contrasting, trying to select again the best immunogen and the best antibodies. Um, two two one seven, like I said, is in a clinical trial, and then. I uh, see we've got this. Uh, we've also solved so, uh, Crouch uh, EM structure of um, OSBE bound to uh, three fabs at once. You need a heavier oh, wow. um, particle for, 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 for Crow EM work typically. And then, uh, and so here with, with uh, C, we, we've done two crystal structures and we're trying to do more. And we've got other uh, antigens lined up, Borrelia burgdorferi antigens lined up to, uh, you know, to tease out the best immunogens for potential vaccines and the best antibodies, prophylactic antibodies, um, and so the the work is is ongoing, uh, and uh, you know, we've got we've got lot, we've got plenty of work to do. Great. Well, Mike, thank you nice. so much for joining us today. Yeah, uh, we're very happy to have you. We're very happy that you're using uh, Nanum yeah. for your research, and uh, yeah, we yes. look forward to. Uh, you know, having some, um, you know, hopefully some results in the future so we can treat this, uh, sure, this sure. Na nasty yeah, disease you. as you described. <laughs> it, it, it is, yeah, it is pretty nasty. And uh, thank you again. Appreciate it. Right. Thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you, Martina, as well. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yes. Thanks, buddy. Bye-bye.